We've changed locations on you. We're now in Lake Placid, Florida at CNM Marine Products. And again, this is Mark Winslow. He has been overseeing our back bench seat fabrication process. And Bill Higman was saying that you do need to have some type of a release agent to get the plug to remove from the mold. But how many coats of the honey wax would we apply to our plugs? On any plug or mold, you're going to want to apply a minimum of 10 coats, okay? You're going to put it on. You're going to let it uh, haze up. It's going to take about 15 minutes normally. You're going to take a clean cloth. You're going to wipe it off. In between coats, a minimum of one hour. So we're talking 10 hours just in wax? One day, yes, sir. Okay, fantastic. We have, Mark, you engineered three kind of storage compartments. We're going to have a center storage area in the middle seat. We're going to have two coolers off to the sides. But where the opening is for this cooler, it comes down and it's right at a straight 90. That's right. Okay, and that is really tough to get glass into that corner. Right, right. Is there anything that we could do to make a radius? Yeah, this is a product that we get from fiberglass coatings. It's basically this modeling clay. Pull a piece off, you're going to knead it together. Just go inside here and just kind of jam it in there with your finger. Take uh, something as simple as a, a coin. We're going to use a nickel. And we're going to be able to make a radius with that nickel. It's going to look like the outside. Now, do we have to wax the clay? You don't need to wax the clay. The tooling gel coat will not stick to that. OK. Now, Bill Higman was saying that tooling gel coat, which is right here, mm -hmm. is much more durable than traditional gel coat. It yes, holds it up to the heat of the lamination process, and the right. mold's going to be getting a lot of action. That's right. OK. Now this is orange. How thick of the tooling gel coat do we need to apply over top of the plug? Oh, you're going to put about 10 to 15 mils on it. If you're going to brush it, you can go back. If you miss any spots of light, you can just brush back over it. Okay, now does that need to fully dry? Yeah, I'm going to let it dry for probably about an hour and a half to two hours. Okay, again, you're a full fiberglass shop here, so that means you have the real cool gear. You have chopper guns and, and stuff like that, but people at home might not have that. Can they use regular fiberglass chop strand mat like this? Sure. This is ounce and a half mat. You can put this on there. That'll work just fine. You're going to want to probably put about three layers. In between each layer, sand it down. Uh, you're going to want to knock some of the burrs that are going to pop up so you can get it nice and level. Sand it down, put it about three layers, and be fine. The real key to having a straight part is, first off, you have, a, you have to have a very straight plug. Sure. All right? But we want to make sure that our mold doesn't twist. Right. or turn, then right. we're going to need to have some stiffening agents over top of our fiberglass chop strand mat. And guys at home could use plywood if they want. Sure. But Bill was telling me about this product right here. This is called Nidacore. Nidacore. And, and how is this going to work into our part? Okay, on the side, you're just gonna, this is really easy to work with. You can cut it with a razor blade. You're going to fit it right to the, you know, each side of it there. But what we like about this, this is scored. So when we put this on your piece right here with a nice curved seat, it's going to fit just perfectly and fit really nice. Do we need to laminate over top of this? Yeah, on your last coat, after you've got your three layers, your Nidacore on it, go over it one more time with another ounce and a half would be fine. And okay. Just cover it up. Now, we also want to make sure that the perimeter of our mold doesn't twist at all. Right. What, what would we use there? As simply as a 2x4. Get a 2x4, cut it to size, uh, all four sides. You can screw it on and then glass it on there, and that'll really hold it tight. Okay, now, Mark, a lot of people already know at, at home that you make hundreds of fiberglass parts for boats, whether yeah. they're fiberglass electronics boxes or rocket launchers or leaning posts for the dock. You make the incredible line of dock boxes. You also have ladders for the dock, but give everybody at home the website. Uh, go to cmmarineproducts.com. Well, thank you so much for the information.